in this challenging situation, we have to go back to our guidance, Al Quran and Hadith. Learning from Al Quran and Hadith is more than just aqidah or faith. Allah is accompanied us with a very comprehensive guidance, including lifestyle that we call halal lifestyle. Then halal lifestyle is not only just faith and lawful, but also uh, impacted to the our social and economic life. Halal lifestyle is living halal industry also, an industry that might be way bigger than we thought is this. Halal industry cannot absorb but Muslim and any other market. But not vice versa. A company is not providing halal option to their customer can have a potential loss. You can see because now uh, the pressure from uh, Muslim consumer also uh, tremendous. That any company done things about the halal product and services, they will have the potential loss. Indonesia halal economy strategy roadmap 2018-2019 has mentioned also how big the uh, uh, span of Muslim Indonesian Muslim to main, to, to cross of the sector of halal uh, lifestyle. Such, uh, of course, food is the biggest one. There's also uh, cosmetic. We have also halal uh, tourism, media recreation, and Asia. Indonesia is the number of one halal food importing country in the world. In this world, should take advantage of this moment. The situation should be solid starting point for Indonesia to fulfill our domestic halal food demand. And furthermore, is also to export our halal food product. This is in line with the statement of our Vice President of Indonesia recently. I think last week, Indonesia had to strengthen our commitment about halal industry that, that aims Indonesia to become the center of halal producer country in the world in 2024. Uh, I hope this event is one of the cause for Indonesia successful in 2024. Today, uh, for us, uh, the focus is uh, it's all about domestic market, right? Uh, there's no more international market at this stage. Um, how could we uh, adapt to uh, the different level of uh, smaller size of mice business with the with the health uh, protocol. So we're working uh, extremely closely with uh, many of the government bodies, uh, Ministry of Tourism and Economic Creative in Indonesia, uh, Ministry of Health, uh, the, the local um, government agency right through. So that's, that's a key crucial part on adapting uh, to the level of the business or what we uh, need to assure our guests in order for them to be able to feel secure coming back to our um, obviously um, hotel, staying in the hotel again um, and uh, that level of assurance is definitely important according to uh, to each of our guest needs, uh, a flexible offer so they can modify, cancel without any hesitation, any charge uh, that just in case if they get tested to win when they come to the hotel uh, or they get sick or they get um, uh, problems anywhere when they plan their their stay in the hotel uh, it's very flexible they can uh, continue to change the date easy to use hotel vouchers uh, instant benefits and rewards and and in terms of um, the delivery of the service also uh, during the PSBB time here in in many area in Indonesia we provide hey a home delivery or home service to all of our um, uh, restaurant um, offering that we would have uh, one of the offer we did that together last time during uh, Ramadan time. I was at that time during um, the beginning of the pandemic of the COVID-19 where everyone has to stay in their home. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, we also have uh, a lot of offers to tailor for our uh, domestic customer, uh, Muslim 
the friendly accommodation facility definitely it's it's uh, essential for us here being uh, being a large scale um, um, domestic audience a uh, food and beverage uh, offering that that tailor that needs an open air hotels um, like our hotel in Chiawi uh, so um, you know people can have more security there relax and you know at the end of the day assure that their um, staycation with their family it's stay uh, and and safe it's going to be the world before covid 19 will not be the same again we need to understand that it's not going to be the same uh, as uh, we have been enjoying uh, our businesses uh, pre covid era so it has been changed now we are in a new uh, era of new reality so it's called new norm next uh, there is a shift in the global business uh, balance of power and the new world order you may like you may you may have noticed you now the business war between the us and the china so who is going to be uh, leading the world economy it's a big question mark and it's going to be a new um, global uh, balance of power when it comes to economy as well so this covid has created that atmosphere at this point of time next the rapid acceleration in embracing technology across uh, industries it doesn't matter which industry you are in the, the technology has gone into each and every segment or any industry that you are in so this so, is the new normal for for us in this post covid era situation next next yes thank you so countries will focus on self sufficiency in supply this is a big biggest advantage that that i see uh, in this situation uh, i recall a chinese proverb when there is a crisis there is an opportunity likewise when you look at the current situation the countries will focus on self sufficiency we don't want to rely on only on china for an example that is happening now i'm glad to see that uh, indonesia is offering uh, incentives for uh, manufacturing uh, companies to come into indonesia because people are now we are the, the big industry owners have felt that they should not be relying only on one particular supply source for for their uh, production so they they are looking they are expanding so this is one of the situation that we are facing currently and there is a big opportunity for indonesia as well next then ways to work will be different now there is a new culture is emerging whether you are in sme or you are a large business organization there is a new work culture work from home culture it's a new uh, culture is embedded into our business world whether we like it or not it has its own pros and cons depends on the industry that you are in next yes new opportunities for smes and startups this is a great time for you if you are in the if you are an sme to think in a broader picture how best you can find new opportunities where you can find the niche the new startups there are so many new startups have come uh, into this era in this uh, in this situation the new startups are been really mushrooming we can see around the globe so there is a good opportunity for startups uh, in indonesia as well business change management process so every business uh, has to go through these three phases uh, in order to change for better because we are now in the mid of uh, uh, covid so we will be anyway going uh, the post uh, the covid will be anyway going away from us sooner sooner or later then we'll be seeing a new normal already we are seeing the new normal but are we ready for it have we prepared for it so the first one is current state yes pre covid period is not going to come again so the next one is going to be transition state yeah so transition state is where we are now if you can click once again uh, gentlemen twice another one once more great so if you really look at the middle circle it's called transition state where we are now right so we are basically we just coming out of covid but we still in the covid so now the time for you to get yourself prepared for it how to face the post covid era we will come to that later so you have three phases so you had it before covid that was current state now you are in the transition and we are going to the future state then also upskill your staff and yourself you have to up update yourself you can't say that i don't know about digital marketing do a crash course do a one week two weeks there's so many courses or even online you can do it 
understand what is this digitization means, what what this uh, digital marketing is uh, means, what the new logistics uh, going to be, what is the new payment system is going to be. Unless otherwise you upskill yourself or reskill yourself, you cannot survive in the post-COVID era. Halal nowadays is not only seen as a Sharia a terminology, not only about the fiqi or sufi, but it is more toward the quality of the product and services. Uh, if you see now, uh, people, uh, the consumers of halal product and services, not only Muslim, about 65% of the halal meat uh, uh, produced and exported by New Zealand is uh, consumed by non-Muslim, yeah, uh, exported to uh, non-Muslim countries. So when we can produce a product, a halal product and services, which is of quality, so the market of the product is not only the number of the Muslim community, the number of the Muslim population, but also the entire uh, mankind on earth. This is the global halal market 2017. It, it, it counted about 3.1 trillion, and we see here uh, less than quarter uh, comprised of food. But the major component of the global halal market basically are non-food. Here, there is uh, uh, cosmetic, personal care, pharmaceuticals as well, and the rest is the services which include the tourism, uh, halal supply chain, etc. There are three main issues in halal products, this says. Firstly, is a raw materials, including food ingredients, including food substitute, yeah? And then processing and authentication. These three are the big, big uh, issues in halal industry. As we know that in Islam, the concept of halal and Taliban, it must be from A to Z, yeah, from source of origin till storage and distribution.